What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. As always, I am your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, and the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. Stuart Turley, my man, how are we doing today? Hey, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood in Arlington, Texas. You got to love it. Yeah, no kidding. You are uh, you're you're right there. Hopefully, the Rangers tonight. Um, unfortunately, didn't 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 go and win the the AL West. Um, that goes to the Houston Astros. Um, which between me and you are not my favorite team of all time. Um, I feel like I've only just adopted the Rangers, but we will look forward to the playoffs there. But despite all of your travels, Stu, you have an excellent show lined up for us. First on the menu to cover solar, wind, energy, get hundreds times more tax incentives than oil and gas. Hmm, interesting, but Stu will dive into it, and I'm sure we'll talk about the difference between tax subsidies and tax incentives. Next up, Saudi Arabia finally joins the natural gas wave. They've pushed really hard into the LNG space, and they did another M&A deal today that hits upon that note Stu will cover all of it next up china's demand for oil and copper is quote booming according to goldman sachs love them back on the bull run so we'll dive in and Stu will cover what goldman sachs has to say about oil and copper demand in china and then finally for the news segment the dangerous delusion of a global energy transition to quote just electricity obviously there's a little bit of a play on words here we'll stew we'll dive into all things the electric future he'll then toss it over to me i'll lightly cover what happened um in the oil and gas finance markets today we really just saw a nosedive of prices other than that not much news floating around as as companies roll into the start of quarter four here and really start working and deploying those budgets that they spent all q3 worrying about so we will dive into all of that and a bag of chips guys but first as always the news and analysis you are about to hear are brought to you by the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy news. Stu and the team does a great job of curating that website to make sure it stays up to speed with all, everything you need to know about the ever-changing global energy markets. Um, you can hit the description below and see all the links to the stories um, and all the timestamps so you can jump ahead and, and dive into what's going on in China's oil demand or, or see what Saudi Arabia did in the LNG space. If you're looking to support the show, guys, the easiest way to do that is subscribe to us on youtube at energy newsbeat we can also find us on apple Podcasts and spotify or wherever you end up listening to your podcast we're in like 12 places so just google us you will find it but subscribing to us on youtube at energy newsbeat is going to be the best way to support the show you can email us questions at energy newsbeat.com or you can see the description uh below we have a form you can fill out you can ask us any questions we love the feedback and we appreciate it coming i'm gonna brett those two where do you want to begin Hey, let's just have a barrel of fun. And let's start out here with solar, wind, and uh, you know what, Michael? Uh, solar, wind, energy get hundreds of times more tax incentives than oil and gas. Uh, as we set this tea up, what do you always hear in the argument when somebody's saying that oil and gas, excuse me, renewables are cheaper than oil and gas? That You always hear that, right? That's why mm -hmm. we have to go there, right? Well, you take away the tax uh, and the subsidies, and they're not. This article is pretty amazing. Uh, they get hundreds of times more tax incentives than oil and gas. Over the last 10 years, domestic solar capacity in the United States has grown 13-fold. That's pretty impressive. And when mm -hmm. you take a look at the EIA just putting out their uh, information and Robert Bryce just calculated that the solar industry receives 136 more federally related tax incentives per unit of energy produced than oil, gas, and coal. It re receives, Michael, 302 times more than nuclear energy. We love us some uh, Robert Bryce because uh, we interviewed him and he is a true industry thought leadership. 
Now, yeah, I think this what one. this article t- does bring up is again, it's talking about the fact that you know, according to these calculations, the solar industry receives 136 times more federal energy tax related incentives, um, as Stu mentioned, and 300 times coal. The, the the part that I want to focus in on, Stu, is the incentives part because I think everybody, you know, right. The, ever listen to a politician on on the democratic side of the aisle they're going to hammer subsidies 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 but what they're doing is conflating incentives with subsidies a subsidy is Stu, here's 400 dollars to go build a factory a right. incentive is if you build this factory i will give you zero taxes for six months maybe monetarily it's the same thing because it works out to be 400 dollars of tax savings versus 400 dollars of original investment but they're completely different versus subsidizing something aka perch you know the the you know the United States purchasing corn from farmers as a direct subsidy to the uh, to the farming industry in the form of ethanol when we had the, the old E85 push or an incentive which is almost like an opportunity zone if you're in real estate hey if you invest in this lower income area that's designated as a uh uh opportunity zone forgive me I'm not I'm not the real estate guy but in X amount of time, I think it's 10 years if you hold the property and do something, you then get to withdraw the profits with zero capital gains. Now, I think they're going right. away at some point, but there's a difference. And so subsidies are far and few between in really either the in, in the energy space in general, whether it's oil right. and gas or solar and wind. What's rampant is incentives, incentives. And if you're an oil and gas investor, we have a lot of those people that partner with our clients. You receive a nice tax incentive if you that go and spend that money on capital expenditures, but the solar in those same incentives are also available for for other solar and wind projects. And according to Robert Bryce, do it's way more. So I think it's important to understand right. the difference between when you hear, oh, the oil and gas industry is subsidized. They're conflating subsidies with incentives. And yes, the oil, if you're incentivized to produce oil and gas. Newsflash, we should be. We should also be incentivized to do solar. The problem is the solar and the wind we have right now don't really work. So any incentives, the incentives don't really work, which is a whole nother story. But I love this this breakdown by Robert Bryce. Yes. And let me uh, give you an example is in the UK, everybody is screaming, you know, subsidies. We got to get rid of the subsidies for oil and gas. Guess what? The subsidies for oil and gas and coal yep. right now is because they have too high of energy and they're giving those subsidies to the consumers because they have too much renewable on the grid in order and it's now too expensive. So the subsidies they're saying are for fossil fuels are actually because they've got renewables on there and they're paying people's bills. And in Germany, it is they're subsidizing the electric bill because they have to use all the renewable energy. So those subsidies are what also Robert Bryce is talking about in there that he's not got clear in this article. I had new piece of merch, Stu. Incentives, right. not subsidies. Exactly. Got to have next? some. Let's go to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia finally joins the natural gas wave. Uh, Michael, this is just an amazing kind of thing. The Saudi company has been trying to get into the natural gas space for quite a while, hired a team of LNG traders in Singapore and, um, Saudi Aramco is, uh, spending $110 billion, Michael, developing the, I- I'm going to butcher this, the ja- Jafra gas field that will help double output by 2030 and make the kingdom as a gas exporter for the first time. Now, it's also buying, let me slide down in here, into a uh, Australian outfit uh, for uh, mid-ocean energy and uh, is in Australia LNG. So they're buying, Michael, the assets and the knowledge to get into the LNG market from mm-hmm. Australia. I thought yep. that's pretty cool. Yeah, because BitOcean is in the process of acquiring somewhere about four Australian LNG projects as it attempts to um, siphon that stuff away from this origin energy, which is um, right. Sydney-based. I mean, it's it's an interesting move for Aramco. You 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 saw hints of this earlier this year. We've covered a few of their 
deals there, the, the deals that they've made with the UAE and Qatar and some of these other long-term purchase agreements. We've seen right. that come through. The Middle East is really making a shift into that LNG space. It's about time Aramco did that. I mean, $110 billion, Stu, is not a number to sneeze at. Um, you, you know, doubling their gas output. It's a lot of gas, Stu. You're going to have something to do with that, considering a lot of the gas they make right now is currently flare. So they're really going to... Um, um, right. The question is, are they going to, you know, these refiners that are building, are they going to only take what what, what is considered high, P, high BTU gas, or are they going to strip a lot of the stuff out to capture some of that excess? Because as you see in the photo right there, they have a lot of waste gas, and that generally for a refinery right. is too low of BTUs. The question is, are you going? Are they going to have the refining capacity to take some of that low PTUs? I'm not familiar with the gas analysis, though, in Saudi, and if it's anything like I know the Middle East is, it's probably 1,700 BTU gas and it's as wet as it gets oops so in a good but, way you want wet gas yeah but when you sit back and take a look hey anytime you can get rid of flaring i'm all in dude so yeah. too bad we right. don't know anything about bitcoin or we'd be screaming losing our minds about bitcoin but we'll save that for something else let's talk about china we gotta love love us some china china demands for oil and copper is booming, says Goldman Sachs. Hey, did they call you and ask to uh, have you come back in as their China representative? No, they haven't interviewed me for, for Jeff Curry's old job. Um, I was a little <laughs> too bearish on my outlook. It was really like a one question where you see oil in 2024, and I didn't put 250. So oh, okay. I don't know yeah. if I'll be getting the job. Yeah, well, we're, we're having to really work on that. China's demand for many major commodities has been growing at quote-unquote robust rates. According to Goldman Sachs, that could be very, very high uh, since they love, what, $250 oil? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. their, their strength in demand has largely been tied to a combination of strong growth from the green economy and grid and property uh, completions. Now, Michael, the green economy, as defined by China, is making all of the green components for the other saps, I mean, excuse me, the other countries mm -hmm. in the world uh, to install. They're making hand over fist on making all the components. So now Goldman Sachs is also saying in here on the uh, uh, critical uh, minerals. The most significant strength has come on the renewable side where Copper demand is up, Michael, 130% year on year. Man, anybody with a uh, business degree loves 130% increase year on year. Yeah, it's just going to mean that your your prices are going to go up. And, you know, this isn't a surprise if you've been following the podcast or following what's going on in China. They're clearly using and stockpiling oil and stockpiling really critical minerals in order to really take themselves and, and allow them to do this quote unquote energy transition at the speed at which makes sense for them, which could be interesting. Again, Goldman Sachs, I don't think is jumping out here on a limb and saying something too crazy. The question is, where does this demand, what does this do to prices? Clearly it didn't have any effect today because we saw prices down about two and a half percent today. So again, Yes, we're seeing a lot of Chinese demand from Goldman Sachs. Yay! Will it result in our $150 oil price? I don't know. Um, yeah, not sure. Not sure. Um, but I'll tell you, the the more they can make money off of the renewables that are selling around the rest of the world, the more they're going to keep making them. And the more I want to get in on this renewables game and make some money. Uh, I'd rather go to bed at night and sleep proud that I'm not ruining kids lives okay let's go to the next one uh the dangerous delusion of global transition to just electricity michael all these stories kind of see a theme again here as you know how we normally pick things out Ron, this is a article written by ronald stein uh, i've had a opportunity you and i have talked about him a couple times on the podcast and uh this article is just another reminder, my Michael. Do you like your iPhone? Do you like your microphone? Do you like your PC? Do you like everything? You have to have oil and gas in order to do that. If you have your wind farm and you have your solar panels, doesn't mean you can have an iPhone. Yep. 
you you got to have oil in order to get tires. Um, do you like your EV? You got to have oil and gas. And so that's what uh, Ronald is really uh, talking about here. As John Stossel so often says, give me a break. You cannot, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Tells us that you can't rid the world of oil and gas and you cannot continue to enjoy the products and fuels that are currently manufactured from crude oil like food <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i think this is a this is a classic breakdown of you know you know pointing out the hypocrisy that people have when they want to rid themselves of oil and gas not knowing how integrated oil and gas is with all of our lives and i think if we had a better understanding of that we would probably go about this energy transition a little different that's why a lot of this stuff does come down to just education and educating people on yes. what exactly oil and gas is doing for you and how low cost energy is making you better off as a human and richer and uh, elevating people out of poverty um, in the uh, hey, hey, making world. you richer, making humanity richer. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. It Wait. sounds funner when I say making you richer, but oh, Stu okay. says it more accurate, minute. which is I'm, it is Wait, making I'm hearing humanity something. richer. Oh, that's a that's a whale waiting for you to kill it out there in in the bay. I'm not trying to make the whales richer. I'm proudly can proudly stand here and say I am not trying to make the whales richer. <laughs> Put that don't, on a t-shirt and print it. Don't ever go swimming, Michael. They will they will nab you. Just hit out for me in the ocean. <laughs> Finding Nemo style. You got anything else? No, I'm good. That was a lot of fun. Well, we'll quickly cover oil and gas finance, guys. In the broader markets, we were actually a, a fairly flat. S&P was only up um, 0.01 percentage points, so it's basically flat. NASDAQ did climb about eight-tenths of a percentage point. Crude oil saw the largest tumble in the last three weeks, um, down from uh, over 92, uh, over 91.40 is where we saw today, um, sitting at all the way now down to its current trading 88.61 as we record this at about 602 here on October 2nd. So not a great day for crude oil. Mainly what happened on that side is, um, um, a, the contract for both Brent expired, which does lead to a little bit of weakness, um, in, in 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 crude oil specifically the wti contract which we talk about um just due to the fact that it rolls over it's always going to affect that a little bit um because of what's called this you know you'll you'll read the articles and they say everybody's profit taking well what does that mean that means as you roll contracts over you have to close out your current position and reopen new positions and there's always usually only about 98 99 percent of the volume that gets rolled over which generally leads to a small downtick so that's mainly what we saw we actually did see a higher um uh, dollar index up about eight tenths of a percentage point so really you know mixed mixed bag around that but again on the day that goldman sachs comes out and 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 screams that china demand is up we see a drop in oil prices so again everyone's going to be a little bit um um uh, a little bit different you know we did see that um this you know avoiding this government shutdown is also going to help. You know, it looks like they're coming to some sort of an agreement. Stu, you've probably got more insight there. We're going it looks like the, the the stuff I'm seeing is we we're gonna avoid the shutdown. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And uh I'm looking forward to my conversation on Wednesday with Congressman mm. uh Andy Ogles, and we're gonna get the inside baseball what he's been fighting for. Of the inside baseball. Um, so you can check that out again on the Energy News Beat podcast, same feed as you're listening to this. You got anything else, Stu? We'll let these fine folks get out of here then. Oh, it's going to be a great day. Everybody's going to just go out and make a bazillion dollars and save the whales. Yep, exactly. Make yourselves richer, not the whales. Put that again <laughs> on a t shirt and sell it and let's make some money off it. All right, guys, for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank you.